Hello everyone. In this video, I will attempt to provide a basic understanding of the buffer in Xlights. Now, a buffer is simply a grid that Xlights uses to apply an effect to a model or group of models. Now, the size of the grid can vary depending on those models, and we can manipulate it to create a variety of different effects, but it will always be a grid, meaning that it's X number of columns by X number of rows. To help explain this, I've placed three different model types onto this layout. And we'll start with the matrix. And if we right click on the matrix and we click node layout, we'll see this table that represents the buffer shape for this particular model. Now this buffer shape is four nodes high by 10 nodes wide, just like we see in this particular matrix. And that's what we would expect to see. And if we go over to the sequencer, and we look at the matrix and we apply a simple single strand effect that moves from left to right. What we see is that it lights up. Let me reset this. It lights up from left to right, one column at a time. Let's look at what X lights is actually doing. So the blue dots represent the nodes of the model. And then this highlighted area is the buffer that is overlaid on top of it. So it's this grid. And when we apply that effect of a single strand from left to right, it lights up the first column, the second, the third, and so forth. That makes sense. So let's go to the layout and let's look at the star model. And if we right click and click node layout, we'll see a grid again. This time, the model itself is only lighting up portions of the grid where the nodes are present. But it's important to understand that Xlights doesn't really care where these nodes are. It only cares about the buffer shape, which is this entire grid. So if we go back to our illustration and we look at the star, this is similar to the buffer shape that we see by default. And if we were to apply that same single strand effect from left to right, it would light up the first one and we would see this node eliminate. Light up the second column in the grid or the buffer, and we might see these two. Again, this one's not exact. Um, these nodes are placed exactly squarely in a, um, one of these cells on the actual buffer. For here, this is just for illustration purposes, but it's gonna move from left to right, lighting up one column at a time. So we can predict what that will look like when we apply the effect. So let's go, let's look back at the single strand effect on the star. And just as we expected, it moves from left to right. Sometimes it's only lighting up one at a time, sometimes multiple, just because of where they fall um, in that column. Sometimes it catches one, sometimes it catches multiple nodes. And by default, that's the effect that we have when we move left to right on a single strand. Let's go back to the layout and let's look at a candy cane. Now the candy cane, we might expect to be laid out similar to how the star was. The matrix and then the candy cane drawn on top of it. But if we click node layout, that's not what we see at all. We see a matrix that's one node wide by 12 high. It doesn't look like a candy cane. So why is that the case? Well, let's go and look at a couple of examples of buffer shapes for the candy cane. Now again, by default, we saw that it was a single column, one wide, 12 high. We might have expected it to look like this one. And if we were to apply that single strand effect to a buffer shape that looks like this, we would see maybe these two nodes light up and it would move to the right and we'd catch this one. Then this one may have fallen into this, this um, third column. Most certainly we would see the entire stem light up as it moved towards the end of that effect. But that's not what we have. We have this one. And if we apply that single strand effect here, it's going to move across, light up an entire column, which will light up every single node in the candy cane and then move away. Well, that's not very useful. But what if we could rotate the buffer 
and have it horizontal and it looks like this. Well, if we rotate that buffer and we keep the same single strand effect and we move it from left to right, it's going to light up this node, which corresponds to the bottom, that node, that node, that node, and it's going to move from left to right. Well, that's a lot more useful than this particular setup for the single strand effect. The important thing to remember here is that if you understand how XLights is viewing the particular buffer, you can predict what the effect is going to look like and you can manipulate it to create the type of effect you would like. We're only scratching the surface with it, but let's look at that candy cane and let's test our theory. So currently the single strand effect is just the same setting except what I've done is I have rotated the buffer in layer settings I can go to transformation and I've rotated the buffer by 90 degrees so that buffer now is laying horizontal versus vertical that it was by default and so that single strand effect is now lighting up just as we expect it one note at a time and it's making that hook if we take this back to none or the default, it does what we expected it to do because the buffer shape was one tall column. And if we move left to right, well, it lights up every node in that column. So hopefully that helps you understand the basics of the buffer shape. Now we haven't done much with it yet, but in future videos, We'll play with this layer settings box and we'll start to understand how different render styles and buffer shapes affect the model and the types of effects we can create.